Now it's time for our first speaker. Uh, this uh, our first speaker is Oleg from Clever Ad Solutions, who will be talking about mobile ads monetization. You need to stop shooting yourself in the foot, basically. <laughs> um, so he's he's going to teach you about that. Um, if there's time at the end of the session, uh, we'll be doing a Q and A, and I, I will be helping out. So if you have any questions for Oleg, uh, just put your hand up, and I'll come over with the mic, and then uh, you can ask Oleg a question. So please welcome to the stage, Oleg. And you can uh, take it away. Hello. Um, my name is Oleg Shlimovich, and I'm CIO and co-founder of PSV Game Studios, Hippo Kids Games, and Clever Ad Solution. Firstly, I'd like to thank uh, my our European friends for, and more especially the organizers of PGC Connect, for their support for the Ukrainian people and uh, Ukrainian IT community. We appreciate it very much. As for uh, us, PSV Game Studio is among the world top five developers of mobile games for kids or, uh, with over 200 uh, games in Google Play and App Store markets. The total downloads of our games has exceeded uh, 900 million over the last six years. During the next 15 minutes, I will uh, be sharing my ideas about its monetization. I will include some advice which hopefully help you not to shoot in the food while setting up the monetization and integrated uh, the most popular monetization platforms. And then we will uh, try to choose the best one. Before we dive, uh, dive in, I'd like to say that its monetization can be generally divided into two parts internal and external. The internal uh, part is about uh, placing ads in, uh, inside your app. This is the game designer role. The main KPIs uh, here are aids per uh, DAU and user engagement. On the other hand, uh, the external part of its monetization is about ECPM, bidding, waterfalls, price floor, and so on. This is the responsibility of its monetization manager. Both parts are very important and uh, should work together in harmony. When one part works incorrectly, the whole monetization process will be negatively affected and you will lose your revenue. Uh, now let's speak a little about our vocabulary. There is some very important terminology which uh, should be understood clearly. ECPM. ECPM is uh, estimation revenue per mile, 1,000 of impression. It's used for measurement of ad network's uh, quality, but it's used without other very, very important criteria, match rate. Every time when we want to show an ad, we uh, send ad a request to every mm. ad network. When ad network uh, finds the ad, uh, the network returns it, and we consider that uh, the request is matched. Match rate is calculated as percentage of found ads match request between the total number of requests. So these two criteria um, can be used to measure effectiveness, effectiveness of ad networks. But they are not so good to measure and try ad mediation effectiveness. It's very important to do not uh, confuse match rate with the display rate. Display rate is the percentage of shown ads impressions between match request. It can never be 100% and usually is mm, not ad monetization uh, responsibility. The guy who is responsible for it is a uh, game designer or ad game designer. Multiplication of uh, display and match rate is known as fill rate. Fill rate is a percentage of impression out of total request number. In some companies, it's used as one of KPIs of its monetization manager, but I think this is not correct. Otherwise, its ID RPU, average uh, ads daily revenue per active user, is the main mediation measurement criteria. It shows how much money we receive from a typical user. In the most important, uh, this is the most important KPI for uh, ad monetization manager. It's very important not to mix it with ID RPPU, average daily revenue per paying user. I recommend also measure the churn rate. Churn rate is the percentage of users who leave the game. 
you should check the churn rate uh, of entire mediation and uh, every ad network. Because in some network, uploading for example, you need to close ad up for three times for continue playing. It's affect retention greatly. Uh, and uh, affects user retention. As, uh, another two very important keywords are latency and ECPM decay. Latency is the delay between initializing the ad request and time point when the ad is ready to be shown. To avoid latency problem, I strongly recommend escalating an uh, ad request immediately after the previous one has been shown. And just after initialization, the, uh, in initializing the ad mediation is decay. Uh, last but not least is ECPM decay. This is a very nasty scene which um, means a drop of ad revenue after each ad impression. The reason why the revenue drops is a topic of another lecture and we will not spend time on it. To minimize it, I recommend using mediation with maximum number of um, ad networks and limit, when it's suitable of course, the number of daily imp impressions for a daily active user. Generally, there are four ways to integrate ads monetization. Uh, first is using one ad network. It's the easiest way. Second is creating in-house mediation system, which is the hardest way. Third, uh, is, uh, classic, third are classical mediation platform, uh, which significantly increase revenue compared to one network solution and um, decreases development time compared to in-house mediation. However, you should spend required amount of time setting up uh, the waterfalls mo uh, manually. And fourth is programmatic mediation. I think this is the future of mediation. It's proje projected to eliminate up to 95% of time requiring for setting up, uh, which you would usually need in classical mediation solution. Now let's go directly to, directly to tips and tricks. Today tips are not typical because they cross the borderline of automatization uh, uh, manager responsibility. Nevertheless, they are extremely useful. The first tip is to set the user age as high as you can. I recommend setting your audience age as um, adult or mature in almost all non-kids apps and uh, games. Actually, there are five categories. Adult, uh, no filter, no restriction, you can uh, show gaming, gambling, alcohol, dating, and so on. This ca category has maximum CPM, uh, but can injure proud people, uh, leading uh, to a possible slight decrease uh, in up rating. M mature. Mature uh, rating excludes dating, gambling, and uh, direct sexuality in ads. It still has a respectable ECPM, but of course, not as high uh, as adults. It's suitable for absolutely all gaming, uh, games, excluding the child-directed apps. Teens, uh, this category has maturity restriction and exclude violence and rude language. The restriction affects uh, your ad revenue greatly, uh, greatly because it re mm, restricts more than 40% of ads. And the last two categories are PG and G. Uh, they have very strict um, filters and suitable only for uh, kids' audience. For maximizing ads revenue, I recommend set it up uh, age in uh, the store and ads network at the same and maximum possible level. If your content uh, rating in Play Store is higher, then you, uh, you will uh, lose your potential profit. On the contrary, if your ad rating is higher than the content rating of your apps, you are at risk of um, having your app deleted from the market by reviewers. The second tip is to look not only at IDRPU, but uh, at the LTV too. This means that aggressive ad monetization strategy is good for hyper-casual and sometimes for casual games. However, it affects retention in games with long game playing and in turn revenue. So higher IDRPU on the first day probably not uh, cover decrease of LTV on your 16th days. Getting to the specifics, my advice not to overuse interstitial in mid-core and hardcore games, but use them intensively in hyper-casual and any hours where user engagement is less than one hour. 
the third tip is to uh, connect it to the second and uh, is to A-B test and check how disabling playable end cards in uh, every networks in every ad networks uh, will affect your LTV and churn rate. It's especially good for Unity, Vangel, um, and uh, Iron Source with uh, uploading. The fourth step is uh, to send impression level data to your analytic system. This will help your UA team to set up t and its campaign. Even if you are an indie developer, you can send impression level events to Firebase and then try to run t campaigns in Google Ads. It's much easier than it seems. The fifth tip, don't clone several ad placement at one ad format. The best practice is uh, not to use uh, one ad placement, uh, for, is to use only one ad placement for each ad format, sorry. In some cases, some developers use several calls in order to separate each call for analytic purposes. Actually, it doesn't make any sense because you can use any software for analytics and receive much more data. You will lose your revenue if you have such type of integration. If you have three placements for a rewarded video, for example, uh, most probably you will receive the same response for them. This means that uh, you will show the user three same ads. It will limit user experience. Also, the CPM decay of uh, such user will be much higher. You can lose up to 75% of uh, revenue by this sort of impression. Uh, but if you use only one place and for all rewarded ads, you will receive your ads one after another. And uh, the mediation algorithm will help you to minimize ECPM decay. The sixth advice, don't forget to re receive users' concern. Users' concern is a critical tip for ads revenue increase, as it allows to show personalized ads in EU and US. It also means that if you integrate any classical mediation solution which doesn't have uh, such dialog and uh, you don't uh, set it manually, you're at risk of huge penalties according to EU and US regulations. In any case, it's much better to show user consent dialog rather not to show. Another sub-tip is to hide and uh, complicate user op options to disable personalized ads as you can. You can find the um, typical uh, dialogue sample on uh, next slide. And the last but not least for increases, uh, increasing ad revenue is don't forget about, forget about um, up at TXT. We were surprised, in fact, that some developers forgot to submit it on their website uh, or forgot to keep them updated. And they lose um, lots of money because of it. it mm. Keep this in mind. Uh, on uh, this slide, we can see the difference that um, in, say, in same app we have up at txt and uh, don't have up at txt. So classical before and after. Now let's uh, go to mediation. So how can we make the right choice? In the last uh, part, we take a look at the main mediation platform in the market and what are the most important criteria for the choosing. Actually, there are three essential points. Uh, of course, it's profitability, uh, simplicity of integration and setting up, and the tech stack. The best way to understand profitability of um, mediation, of course, is A-B testing of mediations. Regarding the simplicity of integration, we should understand how easy it is to integr uh, integrate SDK, how difficult to set up a waterfall, uh, do you need to create and manage account in each ad network, and of course, support response time. Uh, favorites here are programmatic solutions. Regarding tech stack, we need to understand uh, of course, INR and uh, crash rate and uh, granular reporting possibility. Let's take uh, a look uh, at each mediation solution. As we have uh, limited time, I will uh, describe only key advantages and disadvantages. All classical uh, solutions have the same main advantages. They don't charge any commission. Also, Edmo has a very good cross-promotion system. Mark's main advantage is a uh, tech stack and Iron Source has more friendly interface, in my humble opinion.
Let me say some words about disadvantages. Edmob has extremely poor support. Iron uh, source has beat Ross um, uh, test tech, and Max has limited opportunities for apps with less than 10k DAO. Also, all these mediations, uh, medi mediations are affiliated with relevant ads network. It's not very good. After the M&A between Unity and Iron Sword, I think that we, ca we can forget about Unity mediation. Uh, now let's look into a programmatic mediation platforms, which are clever at solutions and upper deal. The advantages are one uh, SDK for all ad networks. They are easy to integrate. You don't need to set up uh, uh, waterfalls. They have responsible support, and uh, they have free cross promotion. But they both charge commissions. Appadil has the uh, best interface. The biggest question for Appadil is its text tech. Uh, INA rate is not uh, low enough. Also, it's affili affiliated with uh, Appadil bid machine. Uh, the last platform is Cleverit Solution. Uh, the advantages are it's only uh, it is only media uh, independent mediation platform and. Um, absolutely free intellectual cross-promotion. As for the disadvantages, I should accept that interface and customization of clever ads are weak points, but now there is some work is doing for this. And now you can choose what kind of solution you should use, manual or automatic. Just like in a car, you do some specific trick using manual gears, but automatic shift is preferable for me anyway. In any case, uh, choosing classical mediation system, if your DAO is less than um, 5K, uh, 5K, means wasting a lot of time without significant uplift. Uh, most mediators have affiliated ad networks, so they uh, will have a conflict of interests. Uh, the publisher wants to maximize his ad's revenue, but affiliated ad network wants to win the auction with the minimum, minimum bid, and then use this cheap impression for advertising affiliated for, uh, for example, Lion Studio. Uh, so, which one is the better? How to choose the proper platform? There is no uh, right answer. You should A-B test them. Uh, so, uh, how you should test? You should test at the same time, in the same app. So, you, wish, uh, you should uh, use two versions. The best practice is stage rollout in Google Play when you can roll out your exper experimental release on 50% of your audience. Uh, I recommend to use app with DAU more than 2,000 uh, users. It can significantly decrease testing time. Uh, of course, you should uh, compare not CPMs but IDRPU. And if you don't trust some new mediation platforms, then you can run A-B test on your average app, not the top one, or as seen, a small percentage of traffic to a new platform. In this case, you should me measure EDRPU, but not revenue. However, uh, my recommendation is to use independent programmatic platform for, uh, with a hybrid med mm, mediation model. Such platforms work much better than other solutions uh, due to machine learning, uh, smart segmentation, and big data, finding the best price for each impression. So use those tips and tricks and mm, for automatization and enjoy the cash flow. Thank you very much for your attention. Hey, Oleg, thank you so much for that. Um, unfortunately, we don't have time for a Q&A. Um, there was a lot of uh, amazing insights there. Um, if, uh, if you have any questions for Oleg, I'm pretty sure you can find him around the venue or on Meet to Match or connect with him on LinkedIn. Booth. And yes, their lovely booth over there, which is, uh, you can see it from here, really. So um, yeah, so if you have any questions, please connect with Oleg uh, on, on site or via LinkedIn or Meet to Match. Brilliant. Can we get another round of applause, please?